Okay, in this lecture, we're going to talk about some practical efficiency considerations in Class D power amplifiers. So the first consideration is the drain and gate capacitance of the Class D amplifier and the switching resistance. So the switching resistance arises from channel resistance in the MOS transistors, and the, gain, the gate and drain capacitance arise from the parasitic capacitance uh, surrounding the device. Now, the gate capacitance in a Class D amplifier, such as this, is bigger than in the other switching PA topologies because we're switching two transistors, the PMOS and the NMOS. And in principle, the PMOS has to be larger than the NMOS. Now, the power consumption due to the capacitances is our typical 1 half CVDD squared F. Okay, recall from the last lecture that the output power is equal to 2 over pi squared VDD squared over R opt. We can show that the power consumed due to the switching resistance is given by the following. Okay, so with this, we can now find the power added efficiency of the class D amplifier. And this isn't like the PAE that we found when we were looking at linear amplifiers. This is uh, a metric that will take into account the output power divided by all of the power that it takes in order to deliver the output power. So essentially what we've done is put all of our power consumption terms in the denominator, and we've also multiplied this whole thing by the efficiency of the matching network. And we had found that in earlier lectures. So let's look at a design example. Now, as I noted before, a class D amplifier is just an inverter followed by a series resonant network. And it doesn't have to be a purely series resonant network. It can really be any bandpass network. So we're going to replace the series resonant network with a bandpass matching network that transforms an antenna impedance of 50 ohms to some optimal termination resistance. Okay, so here we've chosen to use a tapped capacitor match in order to transform our antenna to 50 uh, our antenna of 50 ohms to the optimal termination resistance. And the optimal termination resistance is given by the following. Now, ideally the switch resistance in the transistors is low enough that the R switch squared over R opt term goes approximately to zero. So when we design this, all we have to do is choose a reasonable network quality factor in order to keep the efficiency of the matching network relatively high. If you give this a try before the next lecture, I will solve an example at the beginning of the next lecture. So that example would be an alpha power of 20 dBms with a supply voltage of 1.2 volts, network quality factor of 4, and R switch of 0.5 ohms. Now there are a few other considerations that we have to take into account when we're talking about efficiency degradation. The first is crowbar current. So ideally, we're hard switching the input of these transistors, but in reality, we don't have perfectly infinite strength driving edges. So the square wave that we're trying to drive this with becomes more like a trapezoidal wave. And when we do that, the PMOS and NMOS can be on at the same time for brief periods of time. So here we've shown the PMOS switch is just opening as the NMOS switch is just closing. And that leads to crowbar, or sometimes they call it shoot through current. Now it's important to note with this shoot through current that this can be quite large because in order to make a power amplifier, these switches can be very big. In scaled CMOS, they tend to be on the order of a couple of millimeters of width periphery. Uh, and that means, uh, you know, again, less than an ohm of resistance. So uh, we need to make sure to mitigate this. And we can fix this. So in principle, the way that we fix the crowbar current is to use separate driving waveforms for the PMOS and the NMOS transistor, such that there is a period of no overlap between the waveform. This period of no overlap is sometimes called the dead time, where neither transistor is on. It's important to try and mi minimize the width of the dead time as well, because if we have too high a dead time, it means that neither switch is on 
and that the output duty cycle will be uh, too small and we would lose uh, the output power a bit. Now it's important to note that uh, it's very difficult to put exact metrics on these things. They typically have to be simulated. So you would build your amplifier and use some optimization techniques to optimize the dead time based upon how bad your crowbar situation was. Now, another thing to note is that one of the primary degradations in any power amplifier is due to the matching network. And this arises due to losses in the matching network. And if you recall, one of the primary reasons for losses in the matching network are large impedance transformations from the antenna to optimum termination. So if we increase our opt, we can reduce losses in the matching network. So our matching network efficiency for a two element down converting impedance transformation network is approximately Q of the inductor divided by Q of the inductor plus Q of the network. And Q of the network is given as follows square root of R antenna over R opt minus one. So in the limit, if we can drive R opt towards the antenna impedance, we could make our matching network very efficient. Now, of course, we can't arbitrarily increase R opt because R opt. Now, of course, we can't arbitrarily increase R opt because the output power depends upon R opt. So we have to do something else to the network in order to enable this. Our primary solution is going to be to cascode the transistors and to use separate voltage domains to drive the PMOS and NMOS. So here, by stacking the transistors, this is going to allow me to use a voltage supply that's twice of the nominal VDD. Now, recall, that our optimum termination re re is resistance for a class D amplifier is given as 2 over pi squared times VDD squared over P out. Well, if VDD is replaced by 2 VDD, then this means that we have effectively four times the optimum termination resistance that we had before. Now, in order to make sure that none of the transistors are overstressed, we're going to set the internal transistors to VDD and we're going to switch the PMOS between VDD and 2VDD, and we're going to switch the NMOS between 0 and VDD. We can do this with a level shifter or by DC biasing the transistors and capacitively coupling them. Now, one other thing to note is that we can also use a differential or pseudo-differential topology in order to get the benefit of a 4x R-opt improvement that we had seen in our earlier differential amplifiers. All right, so we're going to stop there for today. Now I haven't been asking, but I've been told that I should ask for you to please remember to like and review and make comments if you are enjoying these videos.